Thanks everyone for coming. Thanks Sabrina, very nice to be oh, here with you today. Thanks for joining me on the couch. Yeah. <laughs> We're very colour coordinated on the couch. We are indeed. Yeah. We thought we'd yeah. just blend in. Yes. You can hardly see us. Yes. <laughs> well, before we get into your background, let's start with the, the philosophical question. Mm. What is curating? Good question. Um, I think we, these days, you hear the word curator or curated in quite a lot of different um, scenarios. So it's not your classical gallery curator anymore, like you hear about curated playlists and curated Instagram feeds and curated markets, and um, which basically in the end means selecting. So you, you're going through a selection process, you, you're putting together whether it's music or, or art or events, um, you know, a, a program, of something and I think that that's good it's good that we can use it in that in that very liberal way but at the same time I think what we wanted to talk about today is really what is the curator in a gallery context what do we actually do demystify um, curating and and how do we work as curators and there are many different ways and people approach it very differently um, and I work in the Dumont's Culture Centre, so I work for a regional gallery. So when I curate exhibitions, I've got a certain focus and I've got certain uh, guidelines that I work with. Um, Kelly, who has a commercial gallery at Platform, might have a different approach to curating and a different My focus. guidelines are all in my head. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> got mine written down. Um, so we thought it might be interesting just to look at, you know, how do we approach curating? Um, what scenarios of curating do you come across? How do you work with artists? might be interesting for artists who are here also to later on ask questions, you know, how do you work with a curator? Um, and yeah, just, just talk about that. And also I think we're going to talk about, you know, how do you get into curating or how do you mm. end up working for a gallery um, in general because you don't just become a curator. Um, well, you haven't always been a curator. You started in th your arts journey in theatre, is that right? Why yeah. Why you tell us a bit about that? Um, so I, I grew up in Germany, in Hamburg, and I always knew I wanted to work in the arts and in culture, but I didn't necessarily think that visual arts was what I wanted to do. So I started working in the Hamburg Theatre, in the education department, and we had a youth theatre, so we would put on plays for all teenagers, and my role was to help students interpret, you know, what they just watched. Um, the play they'd just seen and so I would go into schools and we would do maybe little games to you know interpret a play or we would um, have interview sessions with the actors and that was really interesting um, because I always loved that that interpreting of an artistic product I thought that was really great because you can have that conversation you can really dig into it and, and everyone has different ways of seeing things so I didn't necessarily wanted to work in a theatre after that. I thought, yeah, performance is great, but it wasn't something I felt like I wanted to do for the rest of my life. And um, when I was 20, I met an Australian in Mexico, as you do. As you do. <laughs> as you do. <laughs> and I was still studying in, in Hamburg. I was doing a Bachelor of Cultural Arts Management, which is a little bit like a Bachelor of Arts Administration or Cultural Leadership in, in Australia. Um, again, not necessarily focusing on one particular arts form, but just um, management of arts organisations and art events. And we had a long distance relationship for a year, which was pretty ridiculous by the end, and so I decided to move to Australia. Um, and his mother is a sculptor, and she would exhibit with Sculpture by the Sea almost every year back then in 2008. And so she said, why don't you you know, see if you can work for these guys, um, see how you go, just to get a foot in the door. And sculpture wasn't really something I had ever thought about, it wasn't necessarily um, something I was passionate about, but um, I worked there for three years in the end, three and a half years, and it was such incredible um, time with that organisation because you not only work in like a really large scale public event, but um, the staff and the artists became like my family here in Australia and I was really privileged and lucky to meet all of these different artists, Australian, international artists, 
and get an insight into their practice and um, into their journeys of, you know, from your artwork submission, um, which I was coordinating, um, I was the exhibition coordinator, from that very first idea, that sketch, to that finished artwork that then had to be displayed in an outdoor setting, um, which is quite a challenge. And I also was very lucky to um, meet then head curator Axel Arnett. He's an incredible, you know, thoughtful and intelligent guy. And he really got me into that. That was my first, in, you know, I guess, encounter with a curator and like looking at how do you place work? How do you have that conversation with the artist? How do you play off, in this case, not a white cube gallery space, but a like natural landscape? Um, how do you realise that artist's vision, but also look at the bigger picture of an exhibition? And after working there for three years, I knew that visual arts was my, you know, was my passion. I wanted to stay in that field. Um, I ended up then going to New Zealand and to, I worked for um, another sculpture exhibition, Sculpture on the Gulf. And um, they had an amazing um, I think creative director was her title, Nancy Thompson, who put together a beautiful show and I worked as her curatorial assistant for about three months. And what was really interesting about that event was that it was on Waiheke Island, which is tiny. I think they have 800 residents and in summer it's maybe 2,000. Um, so we were working with a really small community, but we were bringing like interstate and international artists in and trying to showcase, you know, big, well-known international sculptors, but also working with the community, like we were creating a, a work that was put together by the residents of Waiheke. And that really gave me the first insight into, yeah, what is it to work with a smaller community, like not like Sydney Sculpture Agency, big scale, but really try to connect with your local audiences. Um, and so is that what brought you to the Blue Mountains? Well, I actually kind of ended up in a circle because I I went to Brisbane for a little bit. I worked for the powerhouse as a curator there. But um, Ray Bolton, who I mentioned, um, my ex-partner's uh, mom, she bought a house up here in the Blue Mountains in Bilpin about yeah, seven years ago. And so I always came up here and I loved the Blue Mountains. And then the job was advertised for the exhibition manager in the gallery meant to be yeah. and I was like oh hold on this is like regional art and like working as a curator and I, I love the Blue Mountains I've done lots of bushwalks here and lucky you know they offered me the job and so I kind of came after having lived in Australia for six or eight years by that point um, I ended up in the mountains and I've been up here for four and a half years now working at the gallery. Mm -hmm. 